Yeah, I thought uh, I thought as a whole we 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 the most important thing is we finished well. You know, we finished that game like we we should have uh, like we should. We played 60 minutes for the first time. I thought. Um, you know, there's definitely a lot of things to get better at. I think we, you know, we started hot and cold. We missed some tackles. Uh, special teams, I thought, was solid all game. Offensively, was trying to find its identity. Still is, you know. And um, but I was proud of the way they fought. You know, second half they they came out firing, and uh, their quarterback made a couple plays, which we knew he was good. We knew he was going to make some plays, and they just uh, they just kept believing. You know, and uh, that was one of the that fourth quarter is one of the best quarters of football I've ever seen play. You know, we were we were down. They were driving. They had the lead. Uh, I think it was twenty eight nineteen going in the fourth quarter. And uh, and from that point on, I think their offense had minus nineteen yards. And uh, we had two turnovers, two sacks, one hundred and thirty yards of offense, two touchdowns, a two point conversion, a field goal. Special teams had two kickoffs inside the twenty. Punt return forced two, a twenty yard punt and a twenty five yard punt. Um, I mean, all three phases, we've been talking about it all year, all three phases show, showed up for that quarter and, and literally went from a down two scores to up two scores within, I don't know, eight minutes. You know, and then, uh, and then the game management. We got the ball back with 6.54 and uh, burned both their timeouts, centered the ball, overcame a penalty, got a kick to field goal with 1.57 to make it a two-score game. You know, that was a great that was a great job by the offense using the clock. John did a great job of managing the situation. Because even if we miss that field goal, now they have no timeouts, which changes everything on offense when you don't have timeouts. So uh, that fourth quarter was is is what we want. You know, so we're the, the key is now is how, how often can we can we put that kind of performance out there. So I was happy with the guys, they were fired up uh, and I was glad that they just kept going. You know, there's gonna be a lot of close games as we continue to get better on the offensive side of the ball and the defensive side of the ball. And, uh, and in order to make a run, you got to be able to play in games like that where you, you outlast teams. Coach, um, we talked last week about John kind of late in the game against MSU, uh, talking about you know what kind of plays he wanted to run. In this game, he seemed to have had kind of a coming out late in the second half. At what point, I mean, do you think it was his scrambles? I mean, where, where do you think it kind of clicked for him that he finally, you, you can see that he's getting it? Yeah, I think the touchdown pass helped. I think that was a big deal. He overthrew uh, D on the one, barely, and then came back and got and hit the wheel route to D for a touchdown. And I think that helped him a lot. Uh, early on in the game, by design, you know, he threw the ball a lot more. And granted, a lot of more bubbles, but he, he started off by probably six for six or seven. You know, we just wanted to get him going, get, have him get a little bit of feel to him. Uh, and they did a good job. I mean, you know, they weren't going to let us run the ball. They had 16 guys in the box. They were bringing guys off the street to put in there, you know, and, uh, which is we expected. And, and, uh, and there's two ways to counteract that. One, John's legs, and two, our wide receivers uh, and our passing game getting better, you know. So, uh you know, but at, here's the deal. When you do something like that, you can never bail on your running game. You still have to hand it up there. I thought Jamari and Jarvian ran as hard as I've ever seen them run for three yards and four yards. You know what I mean? I mean, they, they earned those three and four yards, which allowed us to have the, uh, the passing game. And as, that, as we get more f uh, in tune out there, I'll use the word, uh, we're going to get more and more dangerous on offense. You know what I mean? But I think that that touchdown pass took a lot of pressure. I thought after that, the ball was coming out really good, and then the run helped. And, and he had a couple of big third down runs for first downs um, that I thought were big. So, uh, you know, he's going to have to be able to continue. We're going to give him a little bit more every week and continue to grow him and, um, and not put him out there, you know, too much uh, as we continue to grow him. He's got a lot of good pieces around him that will help him get better every week. Can you update us on the injury front? Yeah, I mean, we're, we, we came out fair. I mean, Keyshawn got rattled a little bit. We, we don't know if, we'll, if he'll be back yet. You know, that'll be yeah, his concussion protocol. Yeah, protocol. We'll, we'll see. He non-contact today. I'm thinking he'll be back by Thursday or Friday, I think. Um, other than that, I mean, Bellamy had an ankle foot, but he's, he, he, went, he was out there today doing well. Uh, I think that was the only one, only other one. I mean, we had a bunch of um, 
maintenance. We call it maintenance. You know, dings here, dings there. But but uh, other than that, it was a fairly clean game. And is uh, he close to coming back? He could. Yeah, it's close. It's okay. close. From you know, he didn't play last week, and and we we had him in a brace that uh, that that didn't allow him to move much, and now we we unhooked him today. You know, and, and let him go, and and. Uh, It'll be interesting to see. He'll be he'll be a game. Last week he was out. This week he's more of a game time. You know what I mean? So, uh, but he's coming along. He's really pushing. You know, because uh, originally when he was hurt, we were thinking Ball State, and now he's doing so well. And now it's like, well, maybe. You know, so I'm I'm proud of the way he's he's gotten through it and and getting better. He looked pretty good out there today. And you're pretty familiar with Wagner, having seen them when you're at Syracuse. And there's I, some people over there. I have a couple. Yeah, I know uh, I know a team that's played him really well, and I know uh, a couple guys on the team and. Uh, you know they're they're a they're going to be a good looking group now. I mean they're they're all a six five six six across the board. Their receivers are going to be long. Uh, I think their corners are pretty good. Um, so it's going to be a uh, you know they're going to look the part when they come out there. You know we just got the great like I've I've said it eight thousand times and I hate to uh, keep repeating myself but it truly is going to be about us getting better at running our stuff. You know we are in game four of running Coach Dow's calls and. Coach John's calls, you know, and you know you gotta you gotta run them again and and every coverage and, and be able to react you know, at a moment's notice, you know. So that that really does help us focus on us, you know. Sometimes uh, you can get too focused in on your opponent. Uh, we are in a an easy situation to focus on us because we have not seen every defensive call into every formation and every play and the reverse and the double, you know, all the different things that come. Uh, we have to just continue to focus on us. And one one thing I've heard you mention a few times is the juice. Now, can you explain what the juice is? Oh, we just need energy. You know what I mean? I didn't think we had great energy. I thought the crowd had great energy. I thought our team was just average. You know, uh, we we got we picked some up at the end. You know, the energy on the sideline is something we control. You know what I mean? And uh, I had a very firm talk with our non-travel guys, the guys that aren't going to play, the red shirt guys. Because uh, they got one job, they got one job on that sideline is that provide a little bit of juice on the side. We got a bunch of guys focused on doing their jobs, making adjustments mid game, uh, and then we should have a bunch of guys that are hooting and hollering and having fun, you know. And because it does help you when you're the environment around you is up upbeat, it it does help you a little. It makes you feel better. So uh, so we had a very good meeting this week about their expectations and. Uh, you know, they don't have to dress. I can put them up in the stands, you know, and they, if they're just going to sit and watch, I'll make, I'll buy them a really good seat, you know? And, um, so yeah, so we covered that and, and then once, once we got it going, it just spiraled and everyone fed off each other, you know, and, and that's, uh, that's something we, we, we look to do more moving forward. Coach, can you talk about the unique uh, challenge that receivers who are 6'6 and 6'5 present for guys like Darius, Sam? And yeah, it does. I mean, the, just the catching radius is a big deal. You know, I mean, in college football, one of the biggest things you start realizing quickly, and actually more in the NFL even, is no one's open. Everyone's covered. There's someone within a, a small radius of the guy. Uh, but, you know, you just throw the guy open. You, you throw it behind him. You throw it away from the defender. And the, and the guys with the longer catching radius is having an easier time to go get the ball, you know. That's one of the things that helps Geo. It's one of the things that helps uh, Luke Sanders, who's one of our young kids who haven't gotten a ball yet. We need to. You know, he's doing a great job. Uh, so that that's going to be difficult. Now, Sam's lucky. Sam's got long levers, and Sam probably won't be affected too much by it. But they've been going against Geo and Luke, and, and I still think these guys will be taller than Geo and Luke, but not by much. You know, uh, and Jalen Hall is another freshman kid who's about six four, six five. So, uh, so they've had a little bit of, of opportunity. Now the quarterback still has to put it in the right place so that 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 catching radius can help. You know, but uh, but that's definitely a unique challenge that they're going to have to make sure they can elevate if they if the quarterback puts it in the right place. It's sometimes it's it's great coverage and it's still a completion. You know. So how big was that comeback uh, in terms of avoiding no three start? Oh, huge, huge. I mean, it's. Um, we are so dialed into playing 60 minutes because I don't think we did it against USC. I don't think we did it against Michigan State. Uh, you know, you never know how games are going to start. Didn't start great for the first half. I thought we came out third quarter firing pretty good, and then they came back. And, and that was going to be a moment, you know, where we decided if we were going to keep playing or not. You know, and uh, I was proud of Obi. You know, Obi got beat up for a touchdown to put us down two scores, and then he's kind of the one that kicked, kicked off the whole thing with a huge pick right after he got beat. Uh, and then we went on an 80-play drive, which was huge. 
and then then it just started building you know we had the momentum and, and that's what we need to learn how to do is we you know we're we always talk about we're, we're team 112 you know we're 112 team ever put together uh, by Western Michigan University so we have to find what 112 looks like what it feels like what it sounds like and that fourth quarter was was what you'd like it to be you know they had two sacks we had two turnovers they had minus 19 yards of offense uh, and then offensively, we we took care of the ball. We scored twice, and it was it was it was what we wanted to be. So was, you got to see it sometimes, you know. And um, so hopefully, you know, just that quarter can be something that helps us, as at least we have a very clear vision because we've lived it. Uh, what we want this team to look like moving forward. Do you think that? Do you think that part of that vision um, would involve John maybe tucking in a little bit more, given that uh, a lot of attention is paid to uh, guys like Jeremy and, and Jamari? Uh, yeah, you know, you know, design run wise, you know, here and there, he has the ability to do it. That's an important thing for people to know um, that we can two or three times a game call his number, um, but not as a major part of it, not as a major spoke on the wheel, you know. Uh, but in the run game, for a guy that's doing a good job of getting from what we're trying to get him from one to two, maybe to three, you know, he's probably not ready for three yet, unless three is a check down. Uh, and so his three is go, his one, two, go, go make something happen with your feet, you know? So I think you'll see him it maybe more in the, in the, and this isn't by design, but I think you'll see him more in the passing game than in the running game, which is what kind of happened. He dropped back, didn't like one, didn't like two, go. And he got a couple of key first downs for us. Obviously he had the one run, a uh, couple moves he put on, which were interesting, and they worked. And uh, and uh, and he scored. He got he got helped. I think I think a third of the touchdown should go to Donnie, and a third should go to Jarvian for pushing him in the end zone. Uh, but uh, but yeah, so I you know it, it definitely changes. Just like I talked about last week, Michigan State with his their quarterback being able to run, it changes things. You know what I mean? And uh, not that they run him a lot, a couple times. You know, but it does change things. A lot of times that one run is a big one. So uh, so it definitely gives us, it, it's just another thing that allows us to take pressure off the O-line in the running game because we know that people are going to keep continue to try to go after those guys. I, I watched some tape on Wagner yesterday, and they have a running back, number three, Ryan Fultz from Port Mead. Yeah. Uh, he had a couple big runs. He had one called back on a holding penalty. Yeah. Uh, can you talk about him? He looks to be one of the better running backs you'll see all summer. Yeah, he's about, I mean, it says 6'2". He's at least 6'1", 220 pounds. You know, he's kind of like the guys we faced last week, but bigger, longer, taller. You know what I mean? Uh, great pad level, physical, um, Jarvian-ish, you know? Uh, so I think the biggest thing for us is not to let him get going. You know, I, I think he's a guy that... That once he gets, he's not a super super quick. You know, he's not like a Bellamy type guy that's going to create his own uh, separation. But if once he gets going, once he gets his momentum going, uh, he's dangerous because he he'll, he's tough to he's tough to bring down. He plays with great pad level, uh, and he's not slow once he gets going. So we got to just make sure that we you know are, we do if we do a good job up front and we can get him to get the ball and slow his feet down. Uh, I think we got a way better chance because if you let him get his momentum going, he's he's a he's a load. You know, and he's he's a, he's a special player. Him and, and I think I think both their corners are pretty darn good. You know, pretty athletic. Um, so they, there's definitely some players. Yeah. Before the year, we weren't really sure how our wide receivers were going to evolve in terms of who was going to get playing time. But we're seeing like I saw our net for the first time. I think. And, and he had a couple big plays. Third down. Uh, number 15, Ricci's seems to be coming into his own. Yep. Can you talk about the the how that evolving that segment is, is, is working out? They're, they're working. I mean, it's it's a, it's funny as you watch them, you know, that the, the guys that just keep their nose to the grindstone and are working are the ones that are pulling themselves away. You know, uh, there's other guys that are, that are, you know, hot and cold, hot and cold, hot and cold, hot and cold, and, and they're not getting as many rushes. We're really trying to figure out what our two deep looks like, you know. Uh, and you got to get the ball. That's one, that was one of the main reasons, other than John, that early on we did throw the ball on the edges a lot. You know, I wanted, I wanted any receiver that could catch a ball to catch a ball. Granted, number five was that guy for once in a while. Um, but same way with number eight. Same way with number 13. I just wanted to see the ball in their hands so they gain confidence, you know. Because uh, it's it's half experience and it's half confidence, you know. So seven, I think, is really coming along. G, uh, D, 
and Gio had a huge game. I mean, uh, he made one mis one rookie mistake that I was hang very angry about, and we had a conversation about it on the sideline. And but then he he, he made one behind him. He made a couple contested catches, great two point play. Then he made a good decision to run it in. Uh, you know, so I, and and Arnett on third downs. Now he ran some of the worst routes I've ever seen ever. You know, he's nervous as heck and telegraphing everything he was doing. I mean, I watched him, and he comes to the sideline, and I'm like, but he can catch. He is. He makes great contested catches. If there's a guy on him, it does not matter. He's going to find a way to use his body to shield. Yeah, that's a knack, you know. Uh, so he's just going to get better as he's comfortable, you know, because um, we need to develop as many as we can, you know. So I really think that Luke's the one that I think's played really well but has gotten no love. There's nothing thrown his way. It just hasn't happened for him yet, you know what I mean? Uh, so I think I'm really happy with Gio, obviously, D and Gio. Um, Keyshawn was having a, you know, we'll work, work on him with his injury, but I was really proud of Arnett. He, we need him to keep coming. And and uh, and Anton struggled game one, and, but I mean, he had a good day of practice today. He's he's fighting back after after you know dropping a couple balls early, and and because uh, he's very talented. He's just they're nervous as heck when they're out there, you know, and. Uh, and so I think they're going to get better. So it's, I'm, I'm happy with how it's coming. You know, it can never happen fast enough, you know, for, for those two. And I really feel like there's three. It's the quarterback position, it's our wide receiver position, and now it's our safety position. With Tranquil gone, it's, a, it, that's going, to, it's going to be a big, a big hurt. You know, we got two young sophomore safeties that haven't played a ton, and they got to make tackles, you know, in our defense especially. So, uh, and they're going to be really good players. It's just they need to be out there more and more. And defensively, I didn't really feel like there was a spot that we were like, ooh, we're, we're pretty young there. Uh, with Tranquil going, those, that's the position that we need to contain. They're long and fast, and they're going to be good. Now they're out there, and they're going to get a ton of reps, and it'll be good for them. Coach, as someone who's been around the program as long as you have, um, do you have any thoughts on the new mascot? I didn't even see him. I, I saw a picture. <laughs> I, there was a lot going on. Uh, I was enjoying running out of the tunnel, you know, and, and Triumph, like my, it was my favorite, you know, and, uh, and so, yeah, I didn't even, I don't, I haven't even, I haven't even seen what the new Buster looks like yet. I, you know, I think I saw a picture on Twitter, but it was too far away to really see. So, um, I heard, all I heard, I asked my wife, I'm like, how, how does he look? She's like, he's muscular. I guess, so that's a good thing. Right? Uh, so, no, I haven't seen him yet. I'm looking forward to seeing him at some point. Coach, is there your last chance to iron out any wrinkles with Wagner? What are some wrinkles you see that uh, maybe need to be ironed out before Mac play? You know, I think the, as a team, consistency. You know what I mean? We, gotta, we, had a, we had a good quarter of pass game, in my opinion, maybe a half. Um, so we have to continue to get smoother there, you know. Uh, and we, we have to get John to continue to run the offense aggressively, you know, and insert himself in there a little bit more. Uh, and I think defensively, we're just on the tip of the I mean, they're just getting better. Every single time they get out there, they're going to be more dangerous. They're going to be more physical. They're going to be more of a threat to take the ball away and score. Uh, we need special teams to stay exactly where it's at. I mean, we've done it on punt return. We've done it on kick return. Uh, and there's bus, There's the new Buster. I'm just getting a picture of him right now. Does he got a does he got football uniform on? I like it. It's a good look. Number zero. Uh, but uh, you know, for it's it's for us. It's about it's about seeing what we did in that fourth quarter. You know, and, and seeing if we can be that all the time. You know, and we're gonna have good bad, bad quarters, but we need to have more than just one. You know, we had an okay third quarter and a great fourth quarter uh, as a as a three unit team and. Uh, and that's what we got to get better at. Any other questions for Coach? Yeah, Darius uh, Phillips obviously is a, is a game changer. It, it really proved that <laughs> game four. This is the first game, or game three, the first game that really guys, teams that started to kick away from them, kind of change up their kickoff, change yeah. up their punt, obviously, until the end of the, you know, the fourth quarter. Um, and then just throwing away from them. I mean, when they yeah. throw to them, it's, it's a two or three yard gain. So, Obviously, you know, Mac all West special teams the first two weeks, and then you look at the stats and you're like, ah, nice game, but but people don't realize how how important he is to. Well, he made he makes a, he he's now at least this game, and I'm hoping here moving forward he makes a difference in the game without touching the ball, which is quite an accomplishment. You know what I mean? <laughs> without touching it, you're making a difference. I mean. Make no mistake about it, I, t I go right to him when that guy makes a 20-yard punt that puts us in perfect position to go take the lead. I'm like, that was you. 
you know, we just they just had a twenty. I mean, shoot, the last punt we didn't even put him back, and they kicked it out of bounds. Which was weird. <laughs> it's like they thought he might be back there, you know. Uh, and then he had he had unbelievable punt returns, you know. So, uh, and then we were able to do some things. I thought Coach Kenny did a good job uh, at getting. We got uh, Bellamy a touch on a, on a return. We we we, start, we knew they were going to sky kick, so we took some. We took Odell out and put Bellamy in right there, and we got Bellamy the ball one more touch for him. You know, because he has ability to take one. So, uh, we got to stay one step ahead of what they might do. Um, but it's changing. They're doing things they're not used to do to doing. You know what I mean? And that's where opportunity comes when they're running returns or sorry, punt schemes that they're not used to running, and kickoff schemes they're not used to running. Uh, that's advantage to us. I mean, we start we're starting with the ball at the 35, 40 yard line. You know, as we get our offense going, that's unbelievable field position game that, that, that he's allowing us to do even when just by kicking away from him, you know, and, uh, and then, and then make him pay when they do kick it to you. And he did, he did that for sure. You know, so, uh, so he just needs to understand that whether, whether we're going to do everything we can to get the ball in his hands. Uh, but what, even when he's not, he's affecting the game, you know, by, by that field position, those two punts in the fourth quarter were, were all on him, you know, so, uh, he's, he's a special kid. Deshaun Foster had a had a decent return too. Yeah. I mean, he was and um, Darius mentioned him last week that he opened things up. Yep. And he was just put on scholarship. Is that? Yes, he's a walk on. You know, he was a walk on, and uh, you know, he just he was the scout defensive scout team player of the year last year, which is to me says a ton about a guy who was on the scout team, walked on, worked his butt off, and showed up every single day. You know, and uh, I had one left, and. Uh, it was kind of a no-brainer, you know. Uh, as far as how he works now, we in the spring, he's not very big, but he he, he wasn't going to play linebacker with our seniors, so we said, hey, we put weight on your your 240 pounds already. Can you put 250, 260? Put your hand down, uh, kind of be like a Dwight Freeney try to be. He said, yes, sir. You know, put his hand down, and son of a gun, he's pretty good. You know what I mean? He's in our he's in our rotation. He plays better every single time he's in there. He's all effort all the time. Definitely wins the pad level thing, you know, because he's a littler guy. Uh, doesn't get pushed around. He's a huge part of our, you know, kickoff return team. And uh, so, yeah, it, I, we, we did that at the end of camp, and we didn't film it or anything. It was, <laughs> I, I had the kids all thinking one thing, and I was talking about one thing. I surprised him. It was perfect. It was his moment, and it was, uh, it was a pretty neat thing for him. And, and, and he's out there playing. He's doing exactly what I thought he would. Um, because of, of who he is, you know, and, and so he caught it, went right up the side, and then we got the ball in the 40. You know, we, we kind of have, when they sky kick, we still have, we have rules. We have, we just change the return while the ball's in the air, and, and D, uh, Darius got out in front of him to throw a block for him for a change, you know, <laughs> and he, boom, he went right down the sideline, got us, I think, the 45. It was, it was a great shoot return, you know, so uh, he did a good job. We talk about all the time winning college football games is, is hard, and um, the fact that we were able to get that win in front of the home crowd who came out and supported, it was an awesome atmosphere. It was just an amazing experience and a great one for Coach Lester coming back to Weston. So. And through the first three games, we've seen this offense kind of start to take shape. Again, just talk about, uh, you know, through the first couple of games, how you think you have improved um, yourself as a wide receiver and just a little bit about this offense. You know, obviously we have some very talented and special players with uh, our running backs, uh, Jarvion, Bellamy, and Bogan, and then John himself, a very special quarterback, and our old line doing a great job uh, giving him time and giving our running backs holes to run through. And with uh, our position at wide receiver, we have some younger guys with very talented. Um, D. Eskridge is an unbelievable athlete, and uh, he's fun to watch. And I think we're starting to come into our own. And uh, and it's uh, very fun to see. Yeah, last year, Gio, you, you guys had kind of an alpha dog in the receiver room with Corey. Um, I mean, that's there's no way to replace that kind of production. But how have the receivers approached it? Is there is there any obviously competition to be the, the top target for John? Yeah, uh, replacing the top five draft pick is obviously a hard uh, feat. But obviously, we go in every day working and. Uh, wanting to be the top dog. And I think that's just the attitude that uh, many football players have in all positions. And credit to uh, 
everyone in the room, everyone on the team with the change last year, obviously in coaching, just going to work every, each and every day. And um, it's awesome to see you start to show with uh, the way we were able to play in that uh, the second half. Gio, we, we know which, the gr great plays that you made on Saturday, but the one play that coach was referring to, can you remind us what that was? You, apparently you made a, an error, just so that we can kind of keep an eye out for you not doing it anymore. <laughs> um, it was, uh, on, it was, I think it was the second quarter. Uh, I ran a fade route into the end zone and uh, John threw a beautiful ball and I just couldn't find it. Oh, and yeah. uh, I know, really wish we could have that one back. Oh, but, yeah. yeah. It will never happen again. Never <laughs> happen again, I can promise that. <laughs> Did you talk about, um, obviously last year, we on a lot of special teams units that you played on and had a, had a big difference in the game. Now talk about kind of moving from that segment over to, to wide receiver and kind of how you prepare for practice and games a little bit different than you did last year. Yeah, being able to play special teams last year um, was definitely a uh, good experience for me, being able to get on the field and uh, experience what college football was like. And then coming into this year, um, Still being able to play special teams, you know, with Darius, such a special player, it's awesome to be out on the field with him and being able to do all, uh, be a part of everything that he's been able to accomplish. But then moving into a wide receiver role, um, obviously that's something that I wanted to do when I uh, committed here. And it's been awesome to t just take the reins, all of us being a younger group, and just to go to work every day and um, just being able to play on Saturdays. So. Coach Lester talked about the juice and that the juice was good in the second half. Um, can you talk about what that means to you, just kind of the energy and what it can do for you guys when you're out on the field? There's, there's nothing like uh, the incredible fans we have, uh, being able to come out and support and just get that place rocking and just being able to feed off that energy and um, the juice, it's just, it's, it's hard to explain, but it's just a feeling that, you know, when the defense makes a great play, and, it, and the offense is getting ready to go out, and then it just really motivates just everyone to just keep playing one play at a time and to uh, just play it harder for the guy next to you. And how was it running out of the tunnel at Waldo this year? I mean, things are different for you guys, so. Obviously, it's been a, uh, after last season, it's been anticipated a lot. We just can't wait to get out there. And um, again, the, the fans just really make that play special. And being able to run out is, is just an amazing experience. Gio, you, you talked about when you committed here. Can you can you go back to that process? You're from Cincinnati area. Yes. Um, and you were a Fleck recruit. But can you talk about that recruiting process and why you decided on Western? And if you're happy, you made that decision. <laughs> well, my uh, recruiting process, I made it pretty easy. I got offered, and two days later, I committed. Um, I was very impressed with just everything that Western had to offer. And I would personally just love the game of football and being able to get, uh, have the faith in me that I could play at the collegiate level was a big honor for myself and um, very humbled by that. And um, I'm obviously very happy with my decision. We have a lot of special guys here and a special team, um, a true family that you don't really see everywhere across the country and uh, very proud to be a part of it. You talked a little bit about participating on the uh, kickoff return, punt return, whatever, with, with Darius. But talk about going up against him and Obi and Sam in practice, because we talk a lot about the opposition's cornerbacks, but you're, you're going against some pretty good corners in practice all the time. Can you talk about that and how that makes you better? Of course, yeah. Uh, Darius, obviously, a special player. And then Sam and Obi, very talented, very athletic. Very, uh, and they challenge us every day. And um, going back to spring, that was the big thing, being able to go up against athletes like that and push us to be better, I think has helped us tremendously in our growth um, across the board, especially me personally, it's helped me a lot. And uh, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of fun being able to compete with them. And, the, and again, it's, uh, being able to push our young group to uh, be better each and every day and go to work.
And that two-point conversion, too, kind of looked like, you know, one you draw up in the dirt in the backyard. Um, coach said you made the decision to run it in. Was there another option on that play? Are you going to toss it to someone? Yeah, we had uh, Donnie coming out, and um, I'm sure he would have wanted me to throw the ball, but uh, the, the play worked perfectly with the way John was running the ball during that game. Uh, the defense flowed with him, and then it just, I had the easy part of just running into the end zone. So.